I'm going to give you guys an update on what I've been eating on the carnivore diet. And if they're not landscaping in my neighborhood, someone is putting a new roof on their house. So you can't really win with the noise in these suburban environments. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is start up my grill uh, before we get the meat ready to cook. I know a lot of you guys have seen my last few day of eatings. I've been doing a lot of raw stuff. And even when I do cook the food, it's just lightly seared on the outside. So instead of the usual beef, I'm gonna try some veal today. Uh, we got some veal in on Frankie's free range meat. And that will be listed on the website by the time this video's up. So if you guys do want to try some veal, as you guys can see, the meat is, you know, it's really pale pink, which is an indicator of the mineral content, which means, you know, much less iron than beef. And in general, compared to chicken or pork, veal is probably the safest bet for a low iron food. I mean, the problem with fish is, you know, even though fish is very low iron, uh, you do have the pollutant concerns. So these are two of the cuts we have. This is a flap and this is a short loin, AKA like a porterhouse. So uh, I guess for the first meal, we'll throw this on the grill and we'll see how it is relatively lean. And then maybe we'll, we'll cut some of these off and uh, we'll grill those later. Or we could actually just grill a little bit of everything now so I don't have to grill twice. So this flap cut of meat is this like nice big piece. You know, you could slap this whole thing on the grill or even, you know, slice it thin into like veal cutlets and pound them out, bread them, do whatever you want. Uh, this short loin, the bone at the bottom here is actually, it's not separated. So I'm probably gonna have to take a cleaver and just crack through it for some chops. So this, I'm just gonna slice a piece off. Maybe two thin pieces. And this is really tender. So I cut down to the bone with the knife. And I'm gonna take my cleaver. And then we have our nice little veal porterhouse steak. So before I go out and grill this, I'm actually gonna have my mother try the Warrior Bar because I brought some samples home. So this is our ice cream like meal replacement bar. It's made from whey protein. There's some beef tallow, vanilla, honey. I smell the vanilla. Hello. First time taste. Do I get to try something correct for the camera? It's very good. It's very creamy and it's smooth. Mm. Good stuff. What is this? It's our meal replacement bar. It's called the Warrior Bar. Mmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. You said mm before you even tasted it. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. It's really good. It kind of tastes like the meat patty things. Mm -hmm. The blueberry mm -hmm. pumpkin thing. Mm. It's very smooth. Mm. It's very smooth and filling. Mm -hmm. So you guys can get this on Frankie's Strange Meat. Warrior Bar. Uh, we might have some more flavors. Plain and chocolate and berry available mm. within a week or two. Uh, but right now, uh, this is what you can get. It's Fifteen dollars for half a pound of fourteen hundred okay. calories worth of very high quality nutrition. Mm, it's good. So we got our veal. Fires up. So these two thin pieces, I'm probably just gonna do like a minute or two on each side. And this short rib, I'm just gonna try to get some color on it. I should have chopped this in half again. I just didn't feel like uh, messing around with the cleaver today. And even after just like 30 seconds, that should be enough for that side. Is this a way for Frankie Boy to spite the vegans? Start selling veal? Massive amounts of veal? On a serious note, I really like veal as a food because it serves a purpose. You know, when a cow gives birth, it can either give the milk to the calf or it can use the milk to provide nourishment for dozens, if not hundreds of human beings. So, you know, although a lot of people think killing baby cows is cruel and that type of stuff, uh, you know, it requires life to give life and to have happy, healthy human beings. You know, calves are a side effect of that. And there's definitely a humane way to do things. You know, I mean, especially compared to, you know, how most American factory farms are treating their animals. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, do not buy American veal. Do not buy American veal. 
the most important thing I'm going to tell you guys today, stay away from the feedlot conventional meats. Uh, this veal we get is actually from Holland and uh, it's very difficult to get good veal in the States because it's always formula fed, it's full of chemicals, it's full of antibiotics. It's just as bad as feedlot beef. So I uh, don't think you guys can just like run into the supermarket, pick up some veal and try this out uh, because you might feel pretty crappy. You know, this veal is pretty light colored. It's like a pinkish color. But if you go to the supermarket and the regular American veal, it's almost white. You know, it's a stark, a stark quality difference. So we got some nice char on the outside of the veal. I mean, this you know, short loin is definitely completely raw on the inside, uh, but that's how I like it. So I just had a few tablespoons of raw honey. I took some digestive enzymes as well as a bunch of other things I can't disclose at this moment, uh, but you guys might find out sooner than later. So. Here I just have some French salt, Fleur de Sol de Grand, probably the most famous salt in the world. I'm just gonna put a little bit on this veal. I'm gonna start with the, the flap cut. Really tender, completely raw in the middle, as you guys can see. This is bomb, I like this a lot. So, so tender. The veal is mild in flavor, so that char really comes through. You definitely want to put this on a wood fire. I would not want to pan sear this. And uh, for you raw tards that are eating completely raw, you're really missing out because this is 95% raw and it tastes 10 times better. This is actually what I've been doing the majority of the time I've been carnivore. Even when I'm eating you know, cooked meat, it's still raw on the inside. This is so tender. So now I'm gonna take a piece of the strip side of the short loin. Again, as with that flap, it's completely raw. This is so good, guys, I missed. I haven't had the wood fire meat in a while. This is insane. All of this veal is super tender, but you know the filet mignon side here just really just falls apart. One thing that's been persistent throughout my time on the carnivore diet is how the cravings change. You know, I ate ground beef for the past month or two, now I'm sick of it and all I want to do is eat whole cuts of beef. You know, same thing with raw. I was raw for two months and now I really want a piece of charred meat. So your body will kind of tell you and dictate the cravings, you know, between ground beef and whole cuts, between cooked and raw meat. Uh, maybe you'll even start craving, you know, some fish, some other type of stuff. Your body will actually tell you what it wants. And if you binge or cheat on the carnivore diet and you're eating stuff like chocolate or you're craving mushrooms you know there's a mineral there's a vitamin specific to every food so you know whatever reason you're craving something you want to kind of figure out you know what's going on in your body why does your body want this you know does it want larger pieces of meat to ferment further down in the digestive system who knows all right so hopefully this is enough for later i could probably eat this whole thing to be honest like two pounds of meat Italian boy gets stuffed with giant meat. We eventually have to name a day of eating that. Uh, speaking of dirty names, I wanted to name the farm Ram Ranch. And I think I actually put in an offer on the website ramranch.com, so we'll see. Uh, the only reason I want to name it Ram Ranch is because I'm probably going to get rammed uh, with how much money I'm spending. So it's kind of like a, a two-fold name. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna have a few more tablespoons of honey. I'll probably pass out and take a nap. And then uh, I'm gonna work out. And then we're gonna have another meal later. Uh, I'm trying to stay carved up today because today is Friday. And I'm gonna film my progress video on Saturday. My, my June uh, 20th bodybuilding progress video. I wanna film it on Saturday. So I wanna get in some extra honey today and really carb up so that when I wake up tomorrow morning, I can just kind of work out and then film the video all pumped up. Ironically, all of the videos in the past week where you guys have been saying I look like bicep implants and stuff, I wasn't pumped up. Like, if I worked out, you guys would probably be flipping out, but we'll see. So we're gonna do the same meal again later. Uh, oh, I almost forgot the supplements I'm gonna take right now. Uh, I have sitting on my counter right there, some magnesium, some copper some vitamin K2, three milligrams of copper per meal to counter the zinc in the meat. I'm taking 300 to 400 milligrams of magnesium because I'm magnesium deficient from getting too much sun and you know soil depletion of magnesium. 
And I take vitamin K2 because my gut is completely messed up. You know, someone with a healthy gut will synthesize vitamin K2, but in my case, I, I just need to supplement it every day. Vitamin K2, I've, I've really been experimenting with the doses. You know, some days I'll do 500 micrograms, some days I'll do 15 milligrams. So I'm all over the place, but when you take vitamin K2 MK4, you'll notice how it immediately like cleans your teeth. So let me get all this stuff away and I'll, I'll see you guys uh, for the second meal later. So I sliced up the flap and I actually pounded some into veal cutlets for my dad and I'm putting everything in wax paper. Uh, this will be for Father's Day or something for him. Uh, but it's great, you know, it's a nice, tender, very affordable cut. You can pound it thin to make it even more approachable. Uh, I, I chopped up the rest of that short loin and I, I wrapped uh, the ribs up in wax paper. So nice in the fridge, probably enough portions for four or five days. So really easy and convenient. So it's seven o'clock, sun is actually setting right now. Uh, I took a nap for a couple hours because of all that honey and protein. Kind of clocked me out a little bit. Uh, we're gonna have some more carbs before we work out. I normally don't actually have extra carbohydrates pre-workout. I'm just doing it today because uh, as I said earlier, tomorrow we're gonna film the progress video and I wanna have a little more carbohydrates in my system for when I work out tomorrow morning. So a couple more tablespoons of honey. I'm gonna do 80 grams of carbs worth. So we're gonna do four tablespoons of honey. Just finished my workout, it's 9.30. You know, these past few weeks I've been so exhausted, so tired and just not motivated. I've been spending like two hours to get through my workout, just like moping around. Uh, but Frankie boy is putting the work in. I'm not that hungry, but we don't really have that much veal to eat and I don't wanna let it go to waste. And I've definitely been craving more carbohydrates than protein lately. I feel like with the honey and the meat, it's, it's a very low calorie diet overall, especially because the meat's lean. And I've actually lost weight, so uh, you guys are gonna be pretty surprised what I'm weighing in my uh, update video tomorrow. But we're just gonna sit down, have some of the veal that we had earlier. Uh, from a supplement and enzyme perspective, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. I'm gonna take copper, but I'm not gonna take magnesium and uh and we'll do the honey again as well the meal is going to be a bit smaller you know instead of six tablespoons seven eight tablespoons of honey it's going to be three instead of like a pound and a quarter of veal it's just going to be like half a pound to three quarters of a pound same exact play from earlier boys we have that strip loin that we didn't finish and just a little piece of the flank i think this is going to be enough if i was really hungry i could take you know a slab out of the fridge throw it in the pan throw it on a grill and and, and get a little more meat but I should be fine. And I'm really not hungry. You know, if I was trying to live a healthy lifestyle, I wouldn't be eating right now. I would probably just fast the rest of the night. But bodybuilding is not healthy. Bodybuilding, you're always trying to make sure you have enough protein to synthesize muscle tissue and enough carbohydrates for energy and muscle glycogen for workout performance. I'm already nine months in, boys. What's another nine months gonna hurt? And then at that point, I'm gonna be saying, oh, well, what's another year gonna hurt? You know, I spent over eight years of my life bodybuilding, so I'm not gonna emphasize on what I learned in some capacity. I'd be stupid. I'm gonna at least give it a shot. It might take me nine months to just start feeling better from the iron overload stuff. So I, I just li would like to, you know, for a few months to at least a few months to a year to, you know, body build while feeling good and sleeping well, but we'll see if we get to that point. That has definitely hampered my training intensity in a lot of workouts. So, even today, this veal is really easy on my stomach. Um, I felt pretty good earlier. The digestive motility is good. You know, if vegans actually ate the rabbits, the deer, and the bugs that were ground up in the field with their vegetables, well, one, they wouldn't be vegan. They'd actually be healthy, though. Honestly, why aren't vegans, like, in the fields foraging dead rabbits that were ground up by harvesters? Why aren't vegans in the garbage outside Outback Steakhouse? I don't know. Because it's not about nutrition. It's about virtue signaling, being better than everyone else. I mean, if you want to be a sissy la la fairy boy or a stinky vegan girl, that's up to you, but to each his own. I'm like not that hungry and I'm really lazy today, but normally one of my favorite things about having a strip loin like this is the bone has all this flavor. And guys, you know, you take a look, you take a bite out of this, just like this fat over here, this is delicious. 
Oh my god. It's a bit messy, and again, I'm not that hungry, so I don't feel like doing it, but... You get a lot of that char-grilled flavor, and you get all that extra meat off. Because there's probably a good, like, eighth of a pound of meat on here. You know, there's a couple ounces of meat still on this. So you can, like, gnaw this off, give it to your dog. Maybe get a smaller knife and try to get the rest of the meat off. But uh, that's going to be it for me tonight, because I feel pretty good, actually. But definitely not hungry. So if you guys want to try the veal, we will have some cuts listed on Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have the Warrior Bar that we showed you guys earlier, and we're moving into our new facility, uh, hopefully by the end of next week. So we'll show you guys everything, uh, exciting stuff moving forward. We're really looking forward to continuing to provide you guys with high quality animal foods, as well as guiding you uh, to finding your health through consuming said high quality animal foods. Uh, so you guys know how to support me through all those descriptions in the link below. We're gonna do a bodybuilding update tomorrow on Sunday, as well as the live stream on Sunday because more of you guys wanted that. Uh, but thanks again for joining me today, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. I almost forgot. Um, I took the copper already. I took some digestive enzymes, and I'm going to take the vitamin K2 right now and a couple more tablespoons of honey. So that's the, this is not all I had right now. But if you guys want to see a glimpse of the digestive enzymes and that type of stuff, uh, go on my Patreon, and there's some exclusive videos on there.